All right, folks, uh, this is Dr. Faruqi, and we are talking about the survival analysis. In my last presentation, we talk about uh, some background, uh, what is survival analysis? Uh, uh, and then we talked about uh, why we wanna use the survival analysis. We did some <clears throat> examples, and today we're gonna talk about some notation and important concept. So let's start it. The first is time to event. In different literature, it's uh, sometimes it's called failure time, event time, lifetime, survival time. Mostly people use survival time. Uh, I think event time would be better uh, because once we say event time, so all, all kind of events, death, birth, marriage, jobs, everything uh, come under this uh, uh, event time concept. So folks, in many uh, biological, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can say field, uh, behavioral science, social sciences, the response variable uh, is the time to occurrence of event, the length of time, when the event is going to occur, occur. And this, this would be our main end point of the study, right? <clears throat> now, uh, Outcome of interest, not only whether an event occurred, but also when that event occurred, right? For example, if you graduated and you want to know when will you get the first job, then you can, um, then we can study survival analysis and uh, we can see the chance of uh, getting first job, how much time would it take? Similarly, you can say uh, after your marriage, first marriage, when you're going to get the child, right? So time to event, length of the event uh, has different distribution. It could be discrete, could be continuous, or could be both. But today the focus is only on continuous distribution. Let's take some concepts <clears throat> and try to familiarize Ourself. Uh, note that the time to event is restricted to positive continuous random variable and its distribution is positively skewed. When t small t, you know, capital T is a random variable and small t is the value of the random variable. And if the value is zero, we call it a original time of time at origin, or you can this say started time of your study. Note that. Also noted that time to event is the combination of two things. It's a time in days, hour, month, whatever, and the occurrence of event, right? Yes, no. Sometimes we call it a censoring status. We will see what is censoring shortly. Now, the distribution of T can be characterized by its probability density function, cumulative distribution function, survival function, very important, cumulative hazard function, a hazard function again very important so today i will discuss mainly my focus is on survival analysis a survival function and hazard function okay so let's define the distribution function of the time to event it, it is also called cumulative distribution function and you know that you are a statistician you know what does it mean a distribution function tells you the probability of a randomly selected subject from the population that have an event before time. Event could be that death, event could be remission, event could be cure uh, from the cancer, event could be marriage, event could be your first job, event could be cab arrive, so on, right? And distribution function will tell you the probability before the time, right? Keep in mind. Mathematically, uh, you can define the distribution function by capital of fx, and it is the probability of your random variable less than before time, less than equal to t. And by the complementary law, this is equal to one minus probability capital T greater than t. And we will see this is basically the definition of survival function. So you have a relationship between the distribution function and survival function. They are complement. 
All right. Properties. Distribution function life from zero to one. Okay. It's an increasing function. You know, it's a monoton monotonically increasing function. It could be increase stable, but never went down. Right. Like this, you can see there. It's a, you can see it's an increasing function, right? Yes. Now the graph, you can see if you want to see uh, the, the probability of between the two points, just subtract the uh, probability of their correspond uh, probability, right? Like for the, if you want to calculate the probability of the two points, it is just subtract these two probabilities, right? Here it is. Next is survival function, very important. Uh, sometimes it's called survival curve, cumulative, sur uh, cumulative survival. Now, the survival function denoted by a capital S of T, that tells you the probability of a randomly selected subject from the population that have an event after the time T, right? Uh, distribution function before the time T, survival function after the time T, and they are reciprocal, you know that. All right, mathematically, you can define this as uh, probability survival longer than T, greater than T. Probability capital T, random variable, that is a time to event is greater than small t. <coughs> and you can calculate this as, I say this is reciprocal, right? And uh, you know, what is this? This is a capital of fx. We just know that. Okay. For example, if the event of interest is depth, right, and the time is 80 year, then S of 80 will tell you the probability of death after 80 years, right? All right, properties. It's a decreasing function and varies from zero to one. If time is origin, starting time, survival function is one, mean all subject alive if the event of interest is death. At t is equal to infinity, s infinity is equal to zero, mean all subjects have died, right? So your survival function varies from zero to one. All right, what is this? Graph, very important. Uh, the graph I said is a decreasing step function, right? It's a decreasing step function. In, uh, you can say, in our sample, in our practical, but theoretically it's a continuous decreasing function. Right, when t is equal to zero, f of s of zero is equal to one. And heading towards zero as your time increase up to infinity. Infinity mean very large, right? And uh, that tells you the probability of survival. For example, the probability of being alive after 21st year of marriage is 60% as shown in these graphs. You can see that, hold on a second. This graph, like along x-axis, you have a time, marriage time, right? And along x-axis, you have the probability proportion of not being married. So <clears throat> this is the, uh, you know, the, uh, the age, uh, 21st marriage. What is the probability? Uh, uh, 60%, right? Being alive, right? So oh, that is 60%. Then we have, this is the probability you can know that. <clears throat> okay, the probability that uh, survive after like, 36 month is almost 26%. So this is the way you can read the graph. You are statisticians, uh, you know the graph, how to read the graph. So the probability density function, you know, we discussed two cases before time and after time. What about exact time? You know, this is a we are talking about the continuous random variable, and the probability at a specific point will be zero. So that's why we will talk about the interval. So probability density function will tell you the probability randomly selected subject from the population that have an event between the interval, right? Specific time interval t. Mathematically, you can define this as, you know the definition, I can break this down, but uh, it's not like the time to do that. You know that everything. So graph tells you the probability between these two point one sixty to 170, right? 
okay if you know the if you want to know the probability this is between 160 to 170 is about 13 percent right there you go so 30 13 percent of the chances of occurrence of event between 160 to 170 it could be years month whatever you want okay hazard and hazard function very important concept whenever we heard hazard it means like something going bad right at specific any point of time right for example death heart attack uh, computer crash uh, or anything accident right but it could be a good uh, event like a cure after a cancer right uh, you can get a job after your graduation right basically hazard tells you for example if the uh, event of interest is death then probability of dying or death in the next second given that you are alive now so it's an in instantaneous probability uh, uh, rate right the probability of dying in the next second provided you are given that you are alive now mathematically you can, you can write it as i can break it down break this break this down for you but you know that i understand so hazard function again a very important concept hazard function hazard rate sometimes called weighted risk the hazard function is a nice way to describe a distribution of a time to t time to event t it measures how often a particular event happen in a particular group, uh, group over a given period of time this is time is very important over a given time point that will tells you uh, hazard function will tell you the uh, how often a particular event happen hazard function is not, not a probability it's a rate right so it tells you how often a particular event happen in a particular group over given time point t mathematically we can denote by lambda t you can define this as right properties uh, so hazard function is positive but doesn't necessarily increasing or decreasing. There are tons of hazard functions, right? Uh, hazard function can have many different shape, I, as I said that, but it's a very useful tool to summarize the survival data. Those that note that, as I, I early said, hazard function, not a probability at all, it's a rate, right? Suppose that the event of interest is death and lambda t is one person at a time t is equal to 12 month it means at tw at 12 month the probability of dying at the rate of one percent per uh, per month in other word at one year the rate of dying in the following year is one percent right just keep in mind this definition what is the probability next second july provided uh, 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 probability of death next next second uh, uh, provided you are alive now so same you can interpret this all right hazard ratio very important concept is like a odds ratio risk ratio so hazard ratio compared to groups exposed group unexposed group two groups to treatment group control group right so you can compare basically two groups but time is very important right interpretation if your answer is less than one exposed uh, group reduces the risk of event compared to unexposed group right if your answer is greater than one what happened this this numerator will be greater than this denominator right so it means exposed group increase the risk exposed group increase the risk of event as compared to unexposed group. If the answer is exactly one, it means both have same value. So there is no uh, change or you can say there is an impact of risk of exposed compared to unexposed. Point estimate. How we can estimate this? Just this is the formula, right? How about 95% confidence interval? You can calculate by this. How you interpret the result? Now, you are testing your null hypothesis is both groups are same mean their ratio is equal to one right that's your acceptance region basically so if the your interval does not contain one then you would say there is a statistically significant association between 
exposed uh, exposure and response variable over a particular period of time over a particular period of time very important otherwise you don't have any statistical significant association between your exposure and your response variable mean difference between the two groups so that's it for today next time we will talk about the censoring right and uh, uh, if you have any question let me know and you have a very wonderful day bye bye from now